Hi, Morgan here for Onefinity, and today I'm going to show you how I turn my favorite piece of art into this 3D relief carving on my CNC with Carveco. I've been using Carveco for a little over a year now, and I just now found out about this super cool feature. The software will automatically convert any image to a 3D relief that can be machined on your CNC. You don't even have to do anything with your image before putting it into Carveco. The software just does everything automatically. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to click on Relief, then Import. From there, you'll select the image you want to carve. It's going to look really big when you import it because it thinks the pixels are inches. No big deal. Just go over there to the panel on the right-hand side and adjust the dimensions. My material is 32 inches wide. Make sure the dimensions are locked. Put the size of your material in one of the fields, and the other field will adjust proportionally. By default, the maximum Z range is almost an inch, which would look kind of weird. So unlock the dimensions to change the Z range without affecting the X and Y dimensions. I set mine to 1 8th of an inch, 0.125. That's the maximum difference between the shallowest and deepest parts of the carve. Now zoom way, way out, and you'll see your model way out there in outer space. Just right click it, then select Center and Model. It'll land right back there in the center of your material, then hit Enter to paste the relief to your model. The software will analyze the image and assign a range of depths that correlate with the colors or the lightness and darkness in a grayscale image. The software will recognize white, black, and the full range of grays in between. The lighter end of the spectrum will have a shallower depth of cut and the darker shades will be deeper. Now there's a lot of texture in this image and when the software analyzes the image, all that texture will translate to Z movements, which will make the carve take a lot longer. So think about it this way, when you're looking at an image on your computer and you zoom in all the way, you're gonna see all the pixels and all the brush strokes individually. And the software is gonna see that, the variation between light and dark and generate a different depth for each different colored pixel, which in G-code translates to a whole bunch of Z movements. For a project like this, that's gonna take way too long and it's not the least bit necessary. To avoid that, I'm gonna kind of obscure everything that I want to be in the background by smoothing it out with the tools built into Carveco. First, we'll do an overall smoothing by clicking on Relief, Edit, and Smooth. This will apply to the entire model and you can play around with the settings to get the look you want. And that'll just give us an overall smoothing effect, but if you wanna get a little bit more detailed with it, click on Relief, then Sculpt, then Smooth. So this will give you a smoothing brush where you can change the size and strength of the smoothing so you can preserve the details in the parts that you want to stand out. So I'm gonna go through and smooth out the parts that I wanna be more in the background, and that almost gives it a shallow depth of field effect like you would see in a photo or film. And there we go. Now we can toolpath it. So click on toolpaths, and under 3D toolpaths, click on the first one. When you hover over it with the cursor, it'll say create machine relief toolpath. Here you'll select the bit you're gonna use and define your material thickness. I'm using an eighth inch, 12 degree tapered ball nose from Bits and Bits. I'll put a link in the description for you. I'm only gonna change one of the default settings for the bit, plunge rate. For a 3D carving like this, the plunge rate has to match the feed rate because the Z axis is constantly moving up and down as it moves along the X and Y axis. So if your plunge rate is slower than your feed rate, it'll limit the feed rate to whatever the plunge rate is and it'll add a ton of time to your carve. The default feed rate for the bit when I imported the tool library was 125 inches per minute. So I changed the plunge rate to match with a spindle speed of 16,000 RPMs. Okay, let's go ahead and preview that toolpath. All right, looks good. I'm gonna save the toolpath, load it up on a thumb drive, and bring it over to my Elite Woodworker. The Woodworker has a 32 inch by 32 inch cutting area, so this material is gonna max out its capacity. To make sure I get the material within the machining limits, I put a V-bit in the collet and just lined up the left edge with the tip of the V-bit. Piece of cake. Then I just hot glued a little stop at the end there so I could pull up my piece, apply my CA glue and tape, then drop it right down in the same spot. The height of the workpiece is a bit oversized, so I just zeroed out my Y a little bit from the edge. I'm just gonna trim it off later with the table saw. Once the material is secured to the wasteboard, load the program, probe for Z, and run it. Quick note, depending on the size and complexity of your 3D carve, these things can take a while. So you probably don't wanna start one of these things 10 minutes before you're done in the shop for the day. So click on this icon here that looks like a little notepad. That'll give you the toolpath summary information, and it'll tell you how long the operation will take to complete. Just make sure you have enough time to stick around till it's finished. When 
it's done, I just lightly hit it with a soft sanding sponge to knock off any fuzz and added a stain. The stain really added a lot of visual contrast to the piece and it came out exactly as I imagined. Then just add a few coats of rattle can lacquer and it's done. And I think it's pretty neat. Oh, and in case anyone's curious, the piece I chose for this project is from an artist named Nathan Zerdy. This piece was commissioned over 10 years ago and nowadays he's doing art for like Marvel and DC. It's kind of a big deal and a really nice dude. Well, that's it. That's how you do it. And don't limit yourself to famous works of art. If you've made something that you're proud of, or if your kid made a stick figure family and you want to immortalize it in wood, this process works for any of that. I hope that you found this helpful and I really appreciate you sticking around. So thanks for watching. Y'all be good.